Hi folks, long time, no speak. Uh, so, I was listening to Andrew Myers, this guy here, and his video is, I think it's 12 reasons that Brian Koberger will not face a firing squad. I just had something that I wanted to share regarding number two of his points and so we're just going to listen to this because I might have some information on that but I kind of want to um, just double check with Andrew that I'm on the same page as him as well so I hope I am going to make sure he gets this video but I'm going to put it out publicly as well so without further ado let's have a listen to Andrew wait a minute this who who was in, who was the primary agent in charge of that site? It standard protocol that if there's a crime of this magnitude, any crime really, but a crime of this magnitude, there is one central agent. There's one person that's responsible for that scene. So you would get there. You would probably be the second people there. You would get briefed on the way in uh, as to the situation. Hey, we have four dead people that we see in there. It's pretty gruesome, so on and so forth. Um, you have to start assigning tasks as well. Okay, you're the lead detective, but you got other people, detectives helping you out. Okay, hey, you are in charge of interviews. You are in charge of neighborhood canvassing. You are in charge of keeping a log. And a log is very important of knowing who has access to that house. Yet, as the lead detective, it's my crime scene. What I say goes. As the lead detective, it's my crime scene. What I say goes. I don't care if you're a supervisor. I don't care that you're the mayor, okay? I'm signing a patrol officer right there to the front of the house and you are stopping every single person that tries to gain access and you're telling them no you're telling them no right off the bat if there is a specific reason you will come to me and i will make that determination arriving officers seal it off put the tape around throw everyone out Nothing happens until the principal agent gets there, whether it's Moscow police, whether it's FBI, whether it's ISP, whether it's little green men that come down from Mars. One person is in charge of that investigation. So, Mr. Myers, how is this relevant? I'll tell you how it's relevant. The way it's relevant is that on cross-examination, these guys are going to have a hard time saying, well, you know, yeah, I, 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 Dick was over there walking through the first floor and, and Harry was upstairs in the... Th what, well, who was telling Dick and Harry what to do? Who had the central responsibility for nailing the scene down and preserving it and then processing the evidence correctly? Okay, there's, a, there's an extra bit. Um, so... There was somebody, it's a name that I think that many of you may not have heard, but it might ring a bell once you hear it. And this name has just disappeared. This person, just their name was on everything right at the beginning. And I'm going to show you. And then they just drifted off into the ether. Uh, I, he said something else. I can't remember what it was. So let's listen. It could be important. In Idaho, there's actually a state law that says anytime there's a crime, it's the county that has primary responsibility for taking care of that crime in Idaho. So mm. the question remains, who was in charge? Who is in charge uh, at trial when questions are asked about processing of the crime scene are people going to say well it was his it, it was her responsibility there she did it so yeah, i don't know mm -hmm. so said this this guy i'm going to tell you it is in a moment um he, he um disappeared off everything his name wasn't being used anymore he didn't go to pre press conferences if you've watched um, my videos i became a little bit obsessed with the 911 911 is the company that runs 
um, dispatch and somebody called Wendy Barrett. Barrett. Looks like Barrett, but with a eh. Barrett. I'm going to say Barrett. Wendy Barrett. Um, she is the boss of Whitcomb 911. I think she still is. Uh, she also, as you can see here, um, is involved in Washington Military Department, or was. Um, but then I find out that there's a Barrett involved with the case, because I'm like googling this woman, and then another name comes up, and I'm like, are they married? I still don't know the answer. Okay, anyway, so I come across somebody called Captain Tyson Barrett, and he um, runs the campus division of the police. Now, I'm going to choose carefully which one of these we have a look at. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So, this looks like this was on the day. Anna Velasquez. Okay, homicide investigation underway in Moscow. Moscow police are investigating a homicide on King Road near the University of near the University of um, According to the city of Moscow, police responded to King Road eleven fifty eight um, for the report of an unconscious individual. Upon arrival, officers discovered four people who were deceased. No other information has been released at this time. But here we go. Moscow police are asking the public for, public for any information that may help with the investigation. Contact Captain Tyson Barrett. He is the case agent for this incident. I've been Googling case agent and this is what you get when you Google case agent. The case agent is the lead in an investigation. Okay, this is... But, but look what this is called, specialagents.org. The case agent, the true criminal investigator. It takes an extraordinary and wide range of skill sets to become a successful case agent. Now, I don't know if this is just a different use of the term case agent. At the end of the day, it is the case agent that makes it happen. The case agent is the lead in an investigation. And I really think it was the tabloids that told us, the tabloids, I don't know if you call them that in the States, I have to watch my terminology, being from UK, the media, that were insisting that the lead investigator was Brett Payne. But you tell me where that is on paper, because or on screen, digital, documentation. I can't see it anywhere. But anyway, but neither is the Tyson Barrett's name isn't in any documentation, so it's not him either. The case agent is the lead in an investigation and this requires the ability to manage a number of different unglamorous tasks, personalities and resources. The case agent must... Seamlessly debrief a confidential informant, write investigative reports, submit memos for approval, listen to jail recordings, conduct complex database checks, brief superiors, author affidavits, testify in court, conduct surveillance, coordinate... How old is this thing? I don't think it tells us. I mean, this could be something that's changed... This, I mean, oh, I don't know. I tried looking at the um, Idaho legislator, legislature as to what a case agent is, and I'm, I'm no further forward. I don't know, because I thought it might be just a term they use in Idaho, because, you know, like they like to do their own thing. Um Brief superiors, author of David's testify in court, conduct surveillance, coordinate evidence and marshal resources for enforcement actions. A case agent must do all this and complete routine administrative tasks, i.e. maintain firearms proficiency, complete legal training, monthly vehicle log, 
This is often the most stressful role among special agents. Now, I'd be interested to know what Andrew Myers has got to say about this. The case agent shoulders the responsibility for all outcomes of an investigation and it is the culmination of his or her hard work which results in the indictment and arrest of federal suspects. So he's a case agent for the incident. Okay, this is on the 14th. A two minute read. Four people found dead in Moscow near UI campus. The Moscow Police Department is investigating a homicide where four people were found dead on King Road near the University of Idaho campus, according to a City of Moscow news release issued Sunday afternoon, yesterday afternoon. A suspect hasn't been apprehended or identified and the ident identities of the people who died weren't announced by police. And the ident identities of the people who died weren't announced by police. Uh, UI President Scott Green announced in an email Sunday night that the four who died were UI students living off campus. According to Tyson Barrett, captain at the Moscow Police Department, now it doesn't mention that he's part of the campus division here, but from what I've seen, he at least was, and it makes me wonder if he still was at this point, because that would be a reason that he would be involved specifically and could be a reason why he... And, like, at first they wanted somebody from campus police and then they just handed it over to Moscow in general. Um, so, according to Tyson Barrett, officers responded to a report of an unconscious person in an apartment building on King Road around noon. So we've heard this before in other reports about it being called an apartment building. Once officers, or, or an apartment complex, I've seen it written as, once officers arrived, the case quickly turned into a homicide investigation after they discovered four dead people, not deceased individuals, put it to us, you know, hit us with it, according to the City of Moscow news release. King Road is a small street located south of campus. The road is home to apartment complexes and ends in a cul-de-sac. Police were stationed at the junction of King... Makes you wonder, doesn't it? The fact that at first they were... There was this talk of apartments... However, then they later say, I mean, they could have been styling it out, just trying to um, fudge it a bit and um, started saying that the house was divided into apartments. And that is actually, um, that does appear that it, that could be the case because they had to get a warrant to search an apartment. And it appears that that was an apartment within the building. So each of the rooms was considered a separate apartment. And it's made me wonder if one of the rooms that was now empty, Kaylee's room, which we could see there was stuff in it, or the other room that was downstairs, had it been leased out? Had it been sublet? There was a lot of subletting going on before that. Dylan had sublet from somebody over the summer. And maybe she still was subletting. So there were two spare rooms. And Kaylee was probably paid up to the end of the year. She wanted to go travelling. She would have needed the money. She, wanted, she bought that car, didn't she? Was she getting money from someone who was renting the room? Um, anywho, let's carry on. Um, the case quickly turns into a homicide after they discover four dead people. King Road is a small street. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Police were stationed at the junction of King and Queen Roads Sunday afternoon. And I think I've still got the video of that. 
you couldn't get up Queen Road. So you couldn't get onto Queen Road. So there isn't any footage of immediately when it happened. Police were stationed at the junction of King and Queen Road Sunday afternoon, canvassing the area to find potential witnesses and additional information. Barrett said detectives at the department were called to investigate at the crime scene. The investigation is still ongoing. Barrett said police hadn't found the suspect as of Sunday afternoon. Okay. Now, those with information about the incident are asked to contact the Moscow police. Now, it doesn't give his name this time, but it does say or the Office of Public Safety and Security. And from please do your own research. But when I look this up, the Office of Public Safety, that's actually within the university. In fact, let's do it right now. University of Idaho. Yep. So people are contacting the university. You know that... Um, I think it might have been Andrew Myers. He and other people have questioned why um, the university was so involved. This is how involved they were. You could ring them because they are the Office of Public Safety. When you go on the City of Moscow website, and the City of Moscow website, it's partly, I think it's all one thing. The university and the police... They're all like one entity within the city, something called the city of Moscow. I want to look at these articles because I've seen, not like smoking gun or anything, don't get overexcited. But there is some thing that might point to why Barrett was let go. Um, nothing dramatic, calm down. Police identify four University of Idaho students found dead. Currently, there is no one in custody. Invest this. When is this? 14th. Investigators are asking anyone with information related to this incident, incident to contact Moscow police. Okay. On Monday, the city of Moscow released the following information on their Facebook page. So, yeah, unconscious person, 11.58. Upon arrival, officers discovered four individuals who were deceased. They're named here. So, yeah, they those names were released and they made a point. The police make a point of saying, we didn't release the names. I think it was the university that released the names. And there might have been, there must have been some hoo-ha over what, you know, these names being released. Maybe it was Tyson Barrett that released them. All, all four victims were students at the University of Idaho. Details are limited in this investigation. Currently, there's no one in custody. Oh, oh, hold on, this is it. This is the original story, right? The Moscow police does not believe there is an ongoing community risk based on information gathered during the pre preliminary investigation. Then, okay, so this is then they put... On the same day, they edited, but they made sure they put both out um, to show the original and the edited version. So at 10.30pm, they put out basically the same article with um, a change. So out of respect, university officials cancelled all statewide classes online and in person for Monday... The identities of the students have not been released. So this is a... That's the original story. I don't know why they spelled that wrong, but that's the original story. And it names them. And then they shouldn't have named them by the looks of it. Because the ident identities of students have not been released. But they still really, They still put it... They didn't get rid of it. For those seeking support options, they can contact the Counselling and Testing Centre. Original story, the Moscow Police Department is actively investigating a... What's going on? 
Which one's the original story? Okay. The Moscow Police Department is actively... It's an absolute hoo-ha already. Is actively investigating a homicide about a mile from the University of Idaho campus. Do you think that's a mile from... Well, it's not, is it? Because the campus, literally, you would say from where Banfield is, is the campus. So originally, they told people it's a mile away. Because either it was a mile away, and that's not actually the crime scene, or they're trying to distance it from the campus. Nothing to do with us. It didn't happen on our watch. Didn't happen in our yard. MPD is asking any individuals who may have information to call the Moscow Police Department and guess who you need to see about it. Captain Tyson Barrett, because he is the case agent for this incident. Case agent. I don't know what a case agent is, though. Somebody tell me. I can imagine what one is. I want somebody who knows for sure, 100%, what it means in Idaho, what is a case agent. Okay, right. This is on what date? The 14th. Okay. I think after the 14th, Tyson Barrett may not be found in print. His, that name may not be found in print. Um, police identify four University of Idaho students found dead in reported homicide. Moscow police have identified the four University of Idaho students who were found dead Sunday afternoon. And, and slide one, officers investigate a homicide at an apartment complex south of the University of Idaho campus on Sunday, November 13th. Four people were found dead on King Road near the campus, according to a City of Moscow news release issued Sunday afternoon. Boise, Idaho. Moscow police and the University of Idaho have identified the four college students who were found dead just off campus... Sunday afternoon. The students were, and there they are, named on the 14th. Note, some of the identifying details were inconsistent between the police and university news releases. This reflects the university's spelling and hometowns. The police did not address how the four U of I students died, which the university reported Sunday as suspected homicides. So the university revealed that they were homicides. Seems like the university are the ones revealing things. Each of the students' families were notified of their deaths, which led to the public release of their names. Captain Anthony Dallinger told the Idaho statesman. Why is it that this thing about the names, what's... Who's saying their names shouldn't have been released? At this time, police are not releasing the cause and manner of the students' deaths because it's an ongoing investigation, Dallin just said in a phone interview. He said he couldn't share whether autopsies would be conducted on the four students. But he couldn't share whether they would be. Um, well, they have to be if it's a homicide. The Latar County Coroner's Office did not respond to statesman, to statesman requests for information on Monday. Dallin just said he did not know whether any of the four students, this is interesting, was previously known to the police and was unable to share if any of them was a tenant of the property where their bodies were found. Interesting, eh? I mean, I don't know if it is interesting, but it seems interesting to me. Idaho vandals. This is of interest and I will explain why further on. Idaho vandals football coach Jason Eck and university associate athletic director Jarek Wolcott. Now remember what happened that day? It was game day. 
um, still held a regularly scheduled Monday press conference at which they expressed some of the greater community's grief. Did they? Idaho Fandles football coach, do you remember this? Jason Eck and University Associate Athletic Director Jarek Walcott, or Walcott, still held a, regular, a regularly scheduled Monday press conference. Oh, OK, so normally after the game day, they have a press conference about the game and that's when they express grief. OK. This is not a typical thing to happen in Moscow, Idaho, X said. So I think it's very disconcerting to a lot of students and a lot of people in the whole community. And Walcott added, it's a sad day for our community and we are frustrated, this is interesting, with the violence in this community and saddened and disheartened by it. I'll read that again. Walcott said, it's a sad day for our community and we are frustrated with the violence in this community and saddened and disheartened by it. Hmm. Dallinger told the statesman he was unable at this time to release who called 911 dispatch with the report. His volunteer department sent an ambulance and fire engine. His volunteer department did which he said is standard for such calls. But why would you send both for an unconscious person? But none of his team entered the home because police were already there and medical treatment was deemed unneeded. We weren't there very long, Nickerson said by phone. The police department was there prior to us arriving, so we determined we didn't need to do anything at that point. An event of this magnitude, Scott Green, we've heard him say that. As vandals, we must come together and lift each other up. And then, ah, this one. It doesn't say who to contact. So why did I save this one? Barrett. We've got Dallinger in this one, haven't we? Was this on the 14th or are we on to the 15th here? Fourteenth, according to this. So this is another one from the 13th, but um, it was updated on the 17th. And a Again, mentions Captain Tyson Barrett. The initial call from the home was for an unconscious person just south of the university. 1100 block of King Road, said police Captain Tyson Barrett. So, uh, investigators are notifying next kin. Barrett said Sunday night there was nothing more to share beyond the news release. So, there you go. He's all over it on the 13th. Interesting here also. It says, Washington State University sent out an alert Sunday evening that indicated they were not aware of any threat to the Pullman campus or community. Were they? They were not aware. It's interesting how they've worded it. Were they, though? It'd be interesting to know. Were they aware that early? So this is 2016, and this is when Captain Tyson Barrett was made the chief of the campus division. I'm more the captain. For members of the Moscow Police Department, getting to know students and citizens is a vital step in making the community safe. MPD Captain Tyson Barrett, newly appointed captain of the campus division, graduated with a criminal justice degree from the University of Idaho, of course, uh, since served as a reserve officer, patrol officer, detective and sergeant. He has worked in the campus division for a year and a half and has been a captain since January 2015. 
as captain of the services division, Barrett said he oversaw the records manager, property manager, parking enforcement specialist, the code enforcement officer and the investigation unit of the department. Now as captain of the campus division, Barrett said he serves as the liaison between the city and the university, which includes working on student conduct issues, campus conduct and ways to make campus safer. My job and my goal is to make my face known to as many people. <laughs> he went very... He, <laughs> that's so ironic, is to make his face known to as many people as possible, uh, but then make himself as scarce as possible during this investigation. Let, or they made him scarce, I don't know. Let them know that if they need anything from the police department, we do have campus police. Mm. Were campus police contacted? Mm. Were they? Were they contacted directly? Did Brian Koberger work for campus police? Did WSU and University of Idaho share staff sometimes? For example, at a time like this, when it was, I mean, they do with, with um and the courses that Brian Koberger would be would have been teaching as a TA were taught at University of Idaho. Um and they didn't say and Scott Green didn't say no when he was asked if Brian Koberger worked there. He said a similar thing to the thing that the military said, something like <laughs> I haven't got him on a list or something like that. But um do they do the same with campus police? They help each other out, don't they? Making sure that they know. I mean, it was security before, wasn't it? OK, so... And the reason I found it interesting that Tyson Barrett's name kept popping up in all of the early, almost all at least, of the early newspaper reports, the very early ones on the 13th and 14th, is because of this article and a few other articles. So let me just read you some information some further information about uh, Captain Barrett. So, Captain Vandal protects community. So, as you know, the Vandals are the football team. And as we know, it was game day. So, Vandal alumnus reflects on his work as Moscow Police Department captain. This was 2019, updated in 2021 in March. Um, University of Idaho's campus captain, so he was a campus captain in 2021, of the Moscow Police Department, one of UI's primary connections to the MPD is a vandal himself. Tyson Barrett graduated from UI, as we said before, in 1996. He worked as a reserve officer, and I've told you all this about his career, um, he has worked as a captain of the campus branch since 2006, it says here, and I really thought it was 2016. It was a little different, Barrett said, describing the transition to becoming a detective. Now, that sounds strange as well, because it said that he'd previously been a detective. So they've got detectives on campus, interesting. On patrol, typically your calls are done in one or two days. As a detective... They can drag on for weeks, sometimes months, like homicides or rapes or hate crimes. So it takes a little bit of adjustment. So detective in the campus department, OK. Corporal Casey Green said he joined the MPD at approximately the same time as Barat. Both officers joined the same reserve group, a volunteer service run through the MPD. When they officially joined the force, however, Green went into dispatch while Barrett became a patrol officer. They now work together in the campus division. B 
Barat is extremely competent, extremely reliable, Green said. He knows the work inside and out. He has great relationships with the prosecutor's office, campus partners. I mean, God, I just can't believe this. I know things are very different in the USA to how they are over here, but it's just it's just bizarre to me because, you know, I went to uni, it may have been a little while ago, but I'm pretty sure it hasn't changed that much. I'm pretty sure there are no police involved with universities unless something happens at the university. They're not, they've got no involvement. Just a quick interjection here for comedy value. I've just discovered that the UK's first university police team was introduced in 2019 and it's actually it was actually at my university. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe it. What the Wow. That's crazy. A total of 124 crimes have been recorded as having involved student staff or on... You're just getting people in the system. Nine burglaries, five bike thefts, eight criminal damage, six fraud, 25 assaults. Jesus Christ, things have changed. I, I mean, so my life at university was so different from my home. My hometown was just... It's just so rough and ready. I mean, not everybody in it, obviously, but the, you always in small towns have that kind of... It's just so hopeless, really. Some people just end up turning to drugs and stuff. And, yeah, petty crime, drugs, petty crime. Low level, really. Um, but and And fights as well. But you would never see that at uni like you would in the town um but you wouldn't amongst the students so things have changed um drug possession 23 possession with intent to supply for i mean this is really bad because uh, sexual offenses obviously i am that i just i'm disappointed in this really like drug possession, you just don't like the idea of people being put into the system for stuff like that when they formally turned a blind eye and probably had to do a lot less work and there weren't any, I mean, generally not any major problems and you're never going to get rid of it all. Anyway, I think it creates more problems than it solves anyway. That's interesting. So I wonder if that's still the only university. Ne nearly a thousand police officers operating in UK schools. What the fuck? Oh my God, it's all happening here as well. I've been out of the loop. I worked in primary schools before, so... Uh, nearly a thousand, yeah. I can see that with there's a lot of knife crime in... It depends on the on the area, to be fair. It's not really... It's strip searched. Oh, my God. Officers within schools have faced increasing scrutiny in recent years, especially after a black teenage girl referred to as Child Q was strip searched by Met, the Met Police. Oh, my God. In 2020, after she was wrongly accused of possessing cannabis, four Met officers are being investigated for gross misconduct. As head of the campus division of MPD, Barrett said he balances his focus between UI and Moscow at large. See, that's interesting how he's written that. Can you remember? There's no danger to the community at large. I thought this was the case. They were talking about everybody else, not the students. They were saying there's no danger to normal people people who just live in Moscow, the residents of Moscow, 
They weren't talking about the campus community. He oversees two campus police officers, a narcotics detective and three patrol officers. So they have a narcotics detective on campus. Wow. Barrett mainly works with Dean of Students. You can't tell me that there's not been any, and I'll show you something else, informants um, on campus. Whether there's informants involved, confidential informants involved in this case is a different, different matter, I don't know. Think about that, Andrew, Andrew Sadek. I did a video on him, it's really one to watch. Um, let's carry on. I travel with the Vandal, now this is interesting. I travel with the Vandal football team. We work all the men and women's home games. What was it that weekend? Home game. I'm going to read it again. I travel with the Vandal football team. We work all the men and women's home games, Barrett said. We work a lot of security details, such as finals fest. We're at U Idaho bound. Okay. Barrett said the police department, especially the campus division, focuses more on community involvement, programming and outreach than some community members may think. In addition to monitoring campus, two officers, Rick Whitmore and M Mackenzie Fosberg on the way, monitor the local secondary school. We want to be approachable, Barrett said. Our biggest goal is education to prevent crime education for those who've committed a crime and are hoping to mitigate that mm. how could they mitigate it could it be through confidential informants you won't believe how many colleges are involved in using confidential informants got a very interesting article to show you on it so safety and education is our big push Barrett said he remained in Moscow after he graduated because he adored how community oriented the town is the town at large are you talking about or are you talking about the town hmm as an Idaho Falls native the Palouse was a change from the high mountain desert of his childhood the transition from the independent natured Idaho Falls to the tight-knit Moscow community. Tight-knit, that sounds uncomfortable. So, the headline is, I travel with the Vandal football team. We work all the men's and women's home games. This is 2021, Barrett said. We work a lot of security details, such as finals first... We're at UIDAHO bound. Okay, we might need to look those things up. So, hang on, I've got more articles to come. Right, so um, this is an article from 2022. It doesn't say the date of the article, though. But at this point, the case was unsolved. Well, it can't say it's solved yet anyway, but... Um, and it does say here, it says that Chief Fry was formerly um, head of the campus division and that it's now run by Tyson Barrett. So he was definitely head of the campus division at the time of the homicides, of the King Road homicides. So, this is a press release, and as you can see, from the 14th, and as you can see, Captain Tyson Barrett is again named as the case agent here. And so, it seems, it seems Barrett also has involvement in this case. Have you heard of this case? I know that Bubbly Waters covered this, or was it Bubbly? Oh, it might have been Casper West. So, Denise Bennett 
was a professor um, at U of I. And um, she was accused of using... I'll, I'll read the article, but basically she was accused of using meth. Um, and it's not really clear to me whether she did or she didn't, but I'll, I'll read the article anyway. It seems that there someone had an axe to grind and... Um, this is the impression I'm getting anyway. Listen to this article. So, um, breaking, UI warns students of Professor Bard from campus as if, as if she's this really dangerous person, right? And look, <laughs> I mean, she could be, I guess. But that's Denise Bennett. She just uh, looks like a... I don't know, I suppose you, you can't judge a book by its cover. But uh, let's read on. Despite no immediate threat, is there ever, a recent vandal alert notified students to Denise Bennett's alleged admitted drug use and access to firearms. It just seems inappropriate for them. Surely, if it's alleged, it needs to be investigated first surely you don't just go around announcing these things that that seems really inappropriate to me almost as inappropriate as that um thing with brian coburg or at wsu where uh john snyder who was his um mentor and um he was the professor that that he was taing for um, that Brian Koberger was TAing for, he got all the students, because he was supposed to be this harsh marker, to all challenge him, about 50 students, to challenge him on his marking, like, publicly. So he basically had a massive debate. He, he was basically being harangued, kind of verbally attacked, I like I think I just think that's a little bit inappropriate of his mentor to do that. If his mentor felt that he was being why get the students involved? The Moscow police records obtained by the Argonaut through a public records request reveal Bennett admitted to police she last used methamphetamine on November the third. Seems like really unlikely, but I don't know. Is she admitting to it? Officers responded to a report of a domestic dispute in progress with firearms present on November the 4th. According to the police records, the events proceeded as follows. Bennett said she attempted to hide her husband's firearms to hurt his feelings. This is strange. Why would Bennett and her husband, Bradley Janssen, uh, so Bradley Janssen denied the dispute had been physical, according to the report. So I wonder who called the police. Bennett said she had the intention of selling the firearms without her husband's knowledge, according to the report. Both parties stated their marital issues revolved around Bennett's report, recent methamphetamine usage, the report reads. Bennett looked and acted despondent, stating she was a professor at the U of I and both her work and her home life were shit. I mean, why... 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 Why does the UI Argonaut have access to a police report where this was said? I just feel like a little bit too much is being shared by the police. Bennett, who did not have meth on her person, denied wishing any harm on others or herself. This sounds like it was a domestic dispute which has been turned around on her. I don't know. 
but refused to see a medical professional when speaking with police. She did, however, agree to speak with alternative violence on the police representative, according to the report. Bennett was then transported to Moscow Police Station, where she met and left with an unnamed relative. I really feel like they're they're gunning for the females. That's why I don't think um, that... Dylan Mortensen has anything to do with the crime. I'm telling you, those police are misogynistic as you like. She, if if they had any inkling, if they had any suspicion, they would, I am telling you, they would have gone for her. They would have gone for the jugular. No criminal charges were pressed. Janssen was outspoken to students and reporters Wednesday night saying... He was attending the student protest in support of his wife. So it's just some neighbours ring and it was just an argument between them. And then the police are called in. I don't know. Despite admitting no immediate threat to campus, the University of Idaho issued a vandal alert Wednesday morning informing students, faculty and staff Denise Bennett has been barred from campus. Recent admittance to police... I just don't know why they need to announce that. If you see her, call the police and they'll get a SWAT team in and we'll wrestle her to the floor and we'll probably take her out like we did with that man who wasn't making any noise in an apartment in Pullman on the 15th of December. Um... Recent admittance to police of meth use and access has been barred and then say that it, it's due to meth... It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's unprofessional to have, to have put that out to students. Jodie Walker, UI Director of Communication, said there was no immediate threat to campus when the alert was sent... So there's just no need for it, really. Walker said the alert was approved by Chuck Stabin, UI President Chuck Stabin. Is that why they got rid of him? Which is standard procedure for most vandal alerts to give that much information away. Oh, shut up, Chuck. Bennett, a professor in the journalism and mass media department. Oh, dear. She's a victim of her own profession was put on administrative leave January the 24th following unprofessional conduct with College of Letters, Arts and Social Sciences Dean Sean Quinlan. What did she do? And another university employee. I think she might have been... Um, I wonder if she's bipolar. Maybe she was spiralling a little bit. According to the terms and conditions of her leave... I'm I'm not saying she she is I'm speculating and I'm not saying that as a bad thing um I don't think bipolar is um a disability it's um it's a brain disease in fact and it's not something that people can can control without medication Bennett relayed this information via live stream Tuesday. Walker said no direct threat had been made to anyone within the university. She said the information in the alert was taken from a police report in early November because we just stick information from police reports on vandal alerts. (sighs) Seriously. The report, according to Captain Tyson Barrett of Moscow police originated from alleged from an alleged domestic dispute in which Bennett admitted to using meth. Barrett said the case was closed that night and that no charges were filed against Bennett. So why is it being brought up? This is where we thought it was pertinent the university should know what we know. Well, I'll tell you something else that we should know, that you know, that they know. But they didn't know because they weren't originally told. 
in a minute, I'll tell you that. Police said, police, sorry, Barrett said, or not his police said, police revisited Bennett's case following her live stream Tuesday. I mean, God, Big Brother is watching you. Which led to the university citing the information in the alert. The information that was included in the vandal, vandal alert, which came from us, this is Barrett saying this, stemmed from one of our officers watching the live feed, he said. I recognise her. I had a case with her last year, Barrett said. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Barrett saying that somebody else said this. It was probably Barrett saying Barrett said it. I recognise her. Barrett said the university asked Moscow police to serve a notice of trespassing to Bennett. He certainly does cross all his... T's and dot all his eyes, doesn't he? Uh, Fry was correct. Should she be seen on campus? I think he's overcrossing them. He's crossing lines, in fact. Crossing thin blue lines. Following the alert, Ryan Benson, administrator of the Reinstate Denise Bennett Facebook page. Yes, there is a Reinstate... Denise Bennett Facebook page, which we might have to have a look at, delayed Wednesday's planned silent sit-in at the class offices in the administra in the administration building. Benson, is there enough bees in this article? Bennett, Benson, and Barat. Benson said he had not been in contact with Bennett since she read the terms and conditions of her, her administrative leave. Tuesday afternoon, so she's not allowed to speak to anybody from the university. Moscow police vehicles were posted outside... Oh, oh my God. It's just taking things a bit too far. Where were you when there was um, four people being murdered? Oh, I remember. You were all, you were all citing people for allegedly being drunk and disorderly when they didn't appear drunk at all or disorderly. Oh, yeah, that's where you were. Moscow police vehicles were posted outside the administration building Wednesday morning following the alert. However, Barrett said the heightened security was because of the planned protest. UI security declined to comment. Many jam classes were cancelled. Journalism, mass media. Were cancelled Wednesday after the alert and jam director Robin Johnson closed the main office of the department. Johnson also said the radio and television centre facilities were closed for student safety until further notice. Much of Bennett's profane, which means disrespectful, as I just discovered, email sent to university administrators focused on the... De I'd love to read the email. On the declining condition of the RTV centre. Updated Wednesday, 2.17pm, specifically. Ryan Benson administered... Oh, they're loving this, aren't they, at the UI Argonaut? I mean... What, what kind of... They've got no solidarity. This is what they're like. <laughs> the mainstream media. <laughs> oh, dear. But I but I do have sympathy with with Bennett. I feel like she's being um, targeted. I, I don't think this is an isolated targeted attack either. Ryan Benson, administrator of the Reinstate Denise Bennett Facebook page, issued a statement on the page accusing the university of taking Bennett's past out of context in the vandal alert. Wow, it doesn't matter whether it's in or out of context. It's inappropriate. It's, it's just, if it's something that's being investigated. You don't do that. Any reasonable person receiving this alert would assume it implies a real and immediate threat to anyone on campus. 
Evidently, many did assume this. So people thought she's... Oh, my God, there's Bennett. Quick, call the uh, Moscow PD. Call campus police. Call Captain Barrett. Benson also announced he would host a walkout Wednesday, walkout Wednesday, at 6pm. They should make it a regular thing, walkout Wednesday. Students will walk out of class, march to the administration building with duct tape across our mouths to signify the attempts of the university to stifle and mute the voice of their students, he wrote. Good for him. Good for them. Students will meet outside room 047 of the Teaching and Learning Centre and will march to the administration building... The walkout, you've got to march, make sure you march. The walkout, are we walking or are we marching? The walkout will consi- coincide, my apologies, with Bennett's director's first films class, which was cancelled today and is normally taught at 6pm. Oh, that's late. Update January the 30th at 7pm. Jam offices will be open tomorrow. All jam classes will continue as scheduled. (laughs) They didn't like people marching with duct tape on their mouths. The School of Journalism and Mass Media Faculty understands student frustration in the recent dispute between one of our long-time faculty members and the university administration, which has disrupted class schedules and caused a significant amount of confusion and anger according to an email sent to students from JAM faculty. Like everyone else, we want to see this dispute resolved as soon as possible. Brandon Hill. Editor's note. As many Argonaut employees are students in the University of Idaho Journalism Mass Media Department, no Argonaut employee who has previously worked with Denise Bennett as part of their curriculum, has or will report on the developing story. It is our mission as a staff to report university and community news with fairness and transparency. Mm. We do not want to be accused of a conflict of interest. And we know where our bread is buttered. Okay, I could not find a Facebook page called Reinstate Denise Bennett. So we're going to get the other side of the story from change.org. A petition was created on the 26th of January 2019 and there were 1,168 signatures, quite a lot really. Um, Started by Michael Huffstolk. Huffstutler. I can't see him. Can you see him? There he is. Looks a bit like Jeremy, the neighbour. Um, what? But with a beard. But why this? Why this petition matters? Denise is a highly respected and celebrated professor at UI, and has worked there teaching, guiding, advising, and mentoring students since two thousand and six. Um, what? Member of the police department, apparently, according to one article, began his career at the University of Idaho campus department in 2006. According to another article, it says 2016. If you said Tyson Barrett, you might be correct. Or it might have been 10 years later. Um, Not long after a confrontation regarding the mishandling of her grant funding, interesting, University of Idaho associate Professor Denise Bennett was put on administrative leave without any indication regarding the duration. So this was after a confrontation regarding the mishandling of her grant funding. Denise had sent a heated email to many university administrators regarding an issue with one of her many grants 
she has written, as she has writ. It is an expected, it, sorry, it is an expectation for faculty to bring funds into the university via grants. In this, in that email, she used profanity to punctuate her frustrations. Oh, what words did she use? Something many of us have done before. On Thursday, have they? They're all at it. On Thursday, I mean, you know, profanity has different levels. Vastly different levels. What words? I'd like to know specifically what words. Oh, didn't she say something? She said shit on the police report. So maybe she said shit. I mean, it's not the worst word. It's probably not a good idea to put it in an email, but I can't. I once left a post-it note on another teacher's desk and it was... um, Strongly worded, but I didn't use any profanity. I think I probably would have liked to. But um, that caused a few problems. So I I, I sympathise with Denise because I uh, also get a bit hot under the collar sometimes. And you don't know how much had gone before this. We can o- We can only take so much, you know. On Thursday, Denise received a phone call from Sean Quinlan, the interim dean of the College of Letters, Arts and Social Sciences. I call it class. Um, Where she was told that there were multiple instances of her cursing in emails and that this was unacceptable. She's just using poetic license. She's a journalism professor. Following the conversation, Quinlan contacted legal, le, the legal counsel for the university and was granted permission to place her on administrative leave. The university does not have a policy on profanity or obscene language, according to Jodie Walker, the UI communications director. We are calling for Denise to be reinstated immediately. It might come under something else, though, might not it? As this forced leave is both unfounded... I mean, how many emails are we talking? Is, was there really more than one? I think one we can excuse, we can... And aren't you meant to be given some kind of written warning before before you suspend somebody? We are calling for Denise to be reinstated immediately as this forced leave is both unfounded and is an immense disservice to students, the university and the whole com- and the community as a whole. Oh my God, I can't, I can't actually believe this. One charge dismissed against former UI Professor Denise Bennett, right? But, (laughs) okay, so I I feel like this is like a witch hunt. Um, Do you know how many many women are being arrested in Kootenai County who who are like on the wanted list? It's ridiculous. I just feel like there's some kind of... You know, there's that whole misogyny thing going not going on with that church, isn't there? They're all they're all like husbands, their wives, basically. And then, um, and then we've got just all these women being tracked down on like really minor charges. Um, it seems. It seems um, the figures, the number of women in that they were trying to track track down, mainly on drugs charges, and who had clearly all got mugshots, so they'd all been in jail, was just totally disproportionate to like national figures, like crazily disproportionate. 
Honestly, I feel like the, the, the police brought this trouble to the doors of 1122. I feel like they brought it there. I'm not saying that they carried it out, but they're... This is what I feel like. So don't come after me, SWAT, because I just said I feel like it. It's an opinion. And we're all allowed one of those, aren't we? Right. Lewiston, Idaho. New developments in the criminal case against fired, so she got fired, University of Idaho assistant professor. I didn't think she was an assistant professor. I think they've demoted her there. Denise Bennett. I thought she was a professor. Um... The drug possession charge has been dismissed. And then it goes on to say, authorities recently, this is in October of that year. So remember, it was in January that she um, they made this ridiculous vandal alert. Authorities recently arrested Bennett in Lewiston. Officers tracked her down to a hotel. Tracked her down with tracker dogs they had bloodhounds out more bloodhounds than than we saw well we saw one alsatian didn't we at, at the um scene of a quadruple homicide um they get the canines out for anything to do with drugs every five seconds it would seem officers tracked her down to a hotel room inside the clearwater river casino the person she'd been staying with reported to police that she allegedly stole his cell phone and charger. The affidavit of probable cause says she allowed police inside and admitted to the burglary because she took a cell phone, a, took his oh, what, a cell phone, I suppose that is a, I just think it was just a charger. But is this, who is this? The person she'd been staying with? Oh, God. What's going on here? Idaho State Police said they found methamphetamine residue on a piece of plastic. Bennett still faces charges of burglary and possession of drug paraphernalia. God, she's upset them. New developments in the criminal case against fired University of Idaho assistant professor Denise Bennett. The drug possession charge has been dismissed. Authorities recently arrested Bennett in Lewiston. The person she had been staying with and is reported to Lewiston police, she allegedly stole his cell phone and charger. Officers tracked her down to a hotel room inside the Clearwater River Casino. The affidavit of probable cause says she allowed police inside and admitted to the burglary. Idaho State Police say they found methamphetamine residue on a piece of plastic. There's clearly, she clearly needs some help, it would seem. And all they're doing is, is trying to lock her up. Okay, the Seattle Times. So, this was in 2018. On May the 11th, this article came out. Sexual assault accusation against student athlete surfaces. Okay. So, the Moscow Police Department disclosed that a University of Idaho student athlete was accused of sexual assault last year, contradicting a statement by the athletic director that his department has not had any recent issues with sexual assault. A woman filed a report with the Moscow Police Department alleging that she was sexually assaulted by a University of Idaho student athlete in November. It was on November the... Was this the one that was on November the 14th? One of them. There's more than one. Um... The Moscow Pullman Daily News reported the newspaper did not identify the student because no charges were filed in the case. The student athlete, oh, so if no charges are filed, if it's just an allegation, we don't put somebody's name out publicly, don't we? OK, good to know. The student athlete has not been removed from his team. He hasn't been removed. Because there wasn't any um, 
evidence. They did an investigation, you see, because that's what you do when someone's accused of something. You investigate it. Just, just saying. Captain Tyson Barrett informed, not that there's one rule for one and an, another rule for others at all. Captain Tyson Barrett informed the Office of the Dean of Students and Athletic Director Rob Spear of the report, he said. So, Captain Tyson Barrett had a little whisper in Rob Spear's ear and then Rob Spear publicly denied it and then somebody's gone to the press and leaked it. The police de- department investigated the case and forwarded it to the Latar County Prosecutor's Office, which declined to file charges. Because um, they didn't think there was enough evidence, apparently. Spears' lawyer declined to comment on the November allegation, citing an instruction from the university's general counsel not to speak about the case. Spear told the Associated Students of the University of Idaho Senate on April the 4th that his department had not recently had issues with sexual assault. Spear had been placed on paid administrative leave the day before addressing the student senators amid allegations that his department had mishandled complaints of sexual assault and harassment against a football player in the spring of 2013. The university has hired an outside entity to review its handling of previously reported police incidents involving a single football player in 2012 and 2013. When did Captain Barrett start? I'd like to know. Was it 2006 or was it 2016? Because he always travels with the football team, you know, at game days when it's a, when it's a home game. And um, it seems that things that these football players have been up to... I'm not sure if this other one, 2017, was a football player. Just bear with and I'll let you know but it seems that maybe they're not um treated quite the same as their own professor the the professors because they're because that's just expected they're just being lads you know lads will be lads boys will be boys you know